Hello, um, I'm going to do a quick video today to show you how I colour in leaves and flowers and various different pieces that I want to use in my crafting um, using a technique with alcohol inks and clear embossing powder. Now what I'd normally do, I can use my markers or my distress inks, but this is just another way of colouring um, whatever you may want to put on your project. It was something I saw a long time ago. Um, I can't remember where it was. If I find out who it was that originally showed me, I will add the source of that in the description. So apologies for not remembering. Um, so what you will need to start off with, I've got a mat here um, that can take the alcohol ink and that I can clean down with some isopropyl alcohol at the end. So it's a kind of a non-porous surface. If I use my actual craft mat, it'll completely stain it. So I have this mat here. Um, you're going to need a selection of alcohol inks. I'm using my greens here. I only have two. And I can't actually make out what this one is here because the label is covered. It's a kind of a deep, darker green. And this one here is a lettuce colour. I also have my blending solution. I have my blending tool with the felt on the end. I also have some spares in case I want to use some different colours. I have another mix of alcohol inks here. I don't have very many of them. I don't use them a, a whole lot. Um, so yeah, I kind of have the colours that I'd use, like the basic primary colours, so that's enough for me. Um, I also have a tub of clear embossing powder here as well. I have some gloves so I don't stain my hands. As you know, alcohol ink is notoriously hard to get off. My heat tool. Um, what else do we need? We need a... I'm using a Versamark. You can use any brand. What we need is we need a sticky ink clear ink pad for our embossing powder to stick to. You're going to need some tweezers. Um, I have a packet of baby wipes at hand as well, just in case I make a mess. And what I have here, what I'm going to actually colour is some die cuts that I cut out. It's just a plain cream card. It's a card that I had left over as scrap pieces. Um, as you can see there, I've got these leaves here. And I've also cut out, I'm going to try using some different colours on this one. It's a rose, um, quite intricate. They are cut using some X-cut dies. The leaves are from one collection. I can't remember the name of it, but it's a whole um, pack filled with different style leaves. There's kind of all sorts of different ones. There's holly and everything in it. And then this is from another set. It comes with different size roses and stuff like that. So they're the dies that I used on the scrap card. So we'll get on with this now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the leaves first. So what you're going to do is you're going to cover each leaf. I'll just get the lid off the embossing powder here. You're going to cover each leaf completely in your embossing powder. Okay. So I'm going to pick that up and just pop it over the tub here. And I'm going to coat that in the embossing powder. And I'm just going to, on the back, flick off any excess. Okay, so we'll do the same. Oh, I'm going to have to get in the embossing powder on the Versamark. Just give that a wipe off. I'm going to do the same on all the other leaves. So I'm just going to give them a good coating of the Versamark ink. And can you see okay? I hope I'm not going out of shot. Give them a good coating like that. In there and top off any excess. And the last one here well, it's not the last one because I'm going to do the rose now as well. It's the last leaf. Dip that in, flick that off. I'm going to be a little bit more careful with this as it's more delicate. This is the rose and the leaf. Okay, just like that over our tub and sprinkle like that. This is just the small um, 
jars of embossing powder and what I did is I kept a Chinese tub and a plastic spoon to put it in. I just found it much easier to handle that way. Okay, so put the lid back on that. Lid on that. And now out with our embossing tool. So I'm going to put this on the heat. It's going to be harder to hear me. So all I'm going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to blast all of these and get them dry. So if you want, if you find it easier, use a tweezers because they do take off a little bit and you'll burn your hands. And melt the embossing powder. So once it turns, keep moving. My voice sounds all kind of funny and odd. It is because I'm suffering with bad sinus at the moment. So excuse that. Okay, so they're now heat embossed, so they're kind of covered in a lacquer finish now. Okay, so gloves on. You don't have to do this step, but I'm going to be doing some cooking later, so I don't want alcohol ink all over the food. Okay, so I have to take out my two greens. And it doesn't matter, you can put the alcohol ink either on directly on the sponge, or you can put little dabs of it on the leaf directly, or whatever it is that you're going to colour in. In this case, I am going to put some of the lighter in the middle okay and I'm gonna dab that over just kind of in the center area and to have more control on the green or the edges in the darker color I'm gonna put a bit of green Can you see that on the felt there and I'm gonna use that darker color on the edge of my leaf. Now if you used alcohol ink without the embossing it would just absorb directly into the paper. Um, but this way you've kind of put a shiny finish on it so it works really well with the alcohol ink. And what you can do is just dab that in and play with the different tones and shades that you're going to build up using your felt applicator. Turn that over. Okay. If you find you've too much colour in one area, you can go in with a little bit of the blending solution. The same way you apply the alcohol ink to the foam, you can put a little bit of blending solution on that and dab it over the area and it'll remove and lift the colour so that you can go in again. Now I'm going to go back in with a little bit more of that lighter colour in lettuce. This time I'm putting this on the foam so that I have a little bit more control on where I want that. So you can literally play with those and get some different texture. And I like it when it's kind of, how would you describe it, very unblended and pooled in different areas. If I lift that up you can see, can you see there? We've achieved kind of a different marble like effect on it. It's not completely even but leaves aren't so it gives it a more realistic finish. So I'm going to continue in doing that 
on all my leaves here. Now, what you can do is you can go in with different colours, cranberries, oranges, reds, and you can do some autumnal leaves as well if you want to. I'm just sticking with green here. And another thing I'd normally do is I'd make up a batch of these and I'd have them in a little box so that I wouldn't have to keep going through this process every time I wanted to add a leaf to a project. I would have them kind of pre-done. Oh, so I like that one there. Again, when they dry, at the moment that's wet, it'll it, the alcohol ink will evaporate and it'll dry pretty quickly. Um, what you can do is let them dry and see how you like them and you can always go back in and add more colour or add a different colour tone in different areas. So I'm just got some of that darker green in there and then I've got the lighter green on the edge so I'm just going to dab that out there. Now I'm coming to the rose here so I'm going to do the leaf and the stem with the thorns in the green and then I'm going to play around with my currant and cranberry. I also have some wild plum I might mix in and come up with three different tones. You can see those ones there. Come up with some different tones. Um, for the rose actually if I pull sorry I saw something kind of blocking the window here I wonder if I pull it down will it help a little bit with the light I don't know if that makes a difference to you so while I've got the different greens on this I'm going to go in and dab them along the stem okay and again you can play around if you've got a if you've got more than two alcohol links you'll be able to get more different tones on your um, project but I only have the two there which is enough for me okay I might put a little bit of dark green in there just a little tiny bit you only need a very little bit of the alcohol inks as I'd say most of you already know because you've probably played with them a very little goes a long way I've had these bottles for years especially this lettuce color I use it a lot and <laughs> I haven't even got what I've used. I'm still above the paper on the packet here. I haven't even gone down below that yet. So I've got years of product left in that. Okay, so there we go with the green. Can you see that? But what I'm going to do before I go on to the red stage, just going to give a little bit of a clean up there because when I put down my reds, I don't want any of that green lifting and blending into the reds. Otherwise, I'm going to kind of get a dirty color. So what I'm going to do is I've actually, instead of blending solution, you can use the blending solution, but I have a big bottle of isopropyl alcohol here. So I'm just going to squirt a little of that down and rub that on my mat and it'll lift off the ink there. I also recommend that you have the window open when you're doing that because it's, um, it's very potent. Now, so we lift off that felt. I'm going to go in with a new piece of felt on my blending tool. Um, I have some pink sherbet here as well. Let me see now, what will we work with? I will go in with the palest of the red, which, or the palest of these, which is actually pink sherbet. I'll put that down first as a base colour, and then I can work the darker colours over. So a blob of that. Can you see this okay? And I'm just going to dab that all over. that rose okay I don't need to change the foam put the cap back on that I'm going to go in with cranberry which is a lovely deep red small bit of that and starting on the center I'm just going to dab that in random areas on the rose so it looks you can see kind of a pink and a red there again the next colour I'm going to go in with, I think I'll go with the currant instead of the wild plum. The wild plum has quite a purple hue to it and I want to keep this in the red spectrum. So a little bit of currant there and I'm going to dab that over any areas that have no ink and try and blend those two previous colours together. And I really like how this is coming out and getting a nice mix of colours here. I'm going to lift that up and show you. I wonder if I have anything white to put up against so that you can see. Can you see the colour tone in that? 
nice different mix of tones. But you can keep playing with that um, if you want. Another thing you can do if you're working on maybe if it's something like a flower that has it's a solid piece, it's not as kind of detailed, as cut as detailed as that. You could mask off certain areas using um, some masking tape or what you call them, post-it notes or washi tape so that you can make sure that you keep the colour in a certain area, lift it and work it that way if you find it easier. So that's the colour laid down on those. So I'm just going to pop those out and actually what I might do just before I get on to the next stage of heating them, I'm going to go in with another foam square. Now just to let you know, these foam pieces that I've, or foam felt pieces that I removed. I'm not going to throw these out. I'm going to keep these. I'll get another couple of uses out of these. Obviously I'll keep using the greens with the greens and the reds with the reds, but I'll get another couple of goes out of those. So I'll keep those with the alcohol inks. Um, what I was going to do, just to give a little bit, bit of tone, I'm going to go in with caramel, which is all I have on the brown colour of the spectrum and I'm going to put a little bit of brown on the very tip of my felt and I'm going to dab that randomly kind of around the edges and the stem of the leaf. Can you see that? I'm going to put it against that white background again. You see the way the brown has made it a little bit more 3D and realistic. You don't have to do this stage if you don't want to. If you want to keep them a nice clean green, you can do that. And there's enough there on that felt. I can lift this up. I don't need to reapply anymore. Okay, and I'm going to do a tiny bit on the rose as well. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> now, okay. So the next stage, oh, I have another leaf there, I can do that again later. The next stage is the heat tool again. And what you're going to do is you're going to heat this and the heat will reactivate the embossing powder, it'll melt it again. And that will allow the alcohol ink to absorb down through the embossing powder. So it'll give you a different finish again to what is there. Now, if you're happy with that, you could leave it at that stage, but I like, with it. I like it when it's heated. I'm just going to clean this up. So, that's what we're going to do next. And another thing, you might, most likely, you will get a kind of a bubbling effect on it as well, which will make it more realistic and more 3D. So, tweezers again. Oh, get the heat tool going. Oops. And I'm just going to reactivate the embossing powder. And that will draw the alcohol down into the powder so it will sit between the powder, the paper and all that kind of good stuff. So. There we are, we're getting a couple of different bubble effects on that and it also makes it glossy again. When we put the alcohol ink on it, it made it quite matte looking. So this is going to reactivate and give the leaves that beautiful shine. It's a nice alternative, this technique, to, to um, it's nice to try something different. So instead of just putting plain green cardstock and trying to shade it with your Distress Inks or whatever inks you might have at hand, it's a nice way of getting some colour into your leaves. And again, you can do this with anything at all. It doesn't have to be leaves. It's just what I want to do because I'm going to use these now on a tag. So, and I'm going to lift these up and show them to you when I've been finished. So I'm going to do the last one now, which is the rose. Oh, that's lovely. The shine coming through against all those different shades of red is lovely. Okay, I'm nearly there. Very grungy and realistic effect. <coughs> So I can take off these gloves now. They annoy me. 
now I'm going to lift these up now and put them onto it's the back of a paper pad I'll lift these up and show them to you now and I'll take a photograph as well and I'll put that up so that you can see it a little bit better okay can you see those alright can you see the shine has been reactivated now because I used the heat tool as the last stage and you can see all the different tones in the leaves there and that rose came out really really nice I'm happy with that all right okay so there you go something different to try again if I find out where I originally learned the technique I'll post it below if you have any questions pop them in the comments below and I'll try and answer them and thank you very much for watching and hopefully I will be back with another video soon all right take care bye bye